Starbucks has been beaten up and the stock has made our stocks at 52 week low list four times this year. Starbucks board just made a huge move by announcing that they've hired the former CEO of Chipotle, Brian Nickel. He'll be brought in starting September 9th with a $113 million pay package to turn Starbucks around. So the question is, should you buy Starbucks now or wait for the turnaround? Let's dive into the numbers. So here's Starbucks. Now guys, remember, I own Starbucks as part of my portfolio, but never ever buy a stock because somebody on the internet has it. It hit a recent low of $71.55, a little over a month ago. And it surged the day they announced the new hire, and it's now at $93 per share. They pay a pretty healthy dividend of 2.4%. For those of you who love dividends, that's great, but it eats up a lot of their cash flow. $2.55 billion. Now, can they afford it? Well, last year they did $3.8 billion. And in the last five-year average, $2.81. So if you think their last year's free cash flow is stable for them, they can easily afford this. Now, it's funny we mentioned turnaround. Is Starbucks really turning around? Guys, it's all perception. Yes, same store sales were down. But I personally believe that's because of a weaker consumer. When I saw that Target, Home Depot, Starbucks, and Lowe's all had a drop in same store sales, but Walmart saw an increase, it told me the consumer is being a little bit more cautious. Now, I will say this about Brian Nickel. He came in in 2018. Now let's check out the company, Chipotle as a company back in 2018 by looking at the income statement. 2018, they did $4.86 billion in revenue, which was not much higher because they went through that whole E. coli scare and they grew from there. They over doubled their revenue in the time that he was there. Sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? It does, but remember... Chipotle was still growing like crazy. I'm not saying he's not going to be successful at Starbucks, but what he's going to do at Starbucks is completely different than what he's going, that he did at Chipotle. Now, before Chipotle, he was the CEO of Taco Bell. This to me is probably more in line with what he's doing at Starbucks. Taco Bell, established brand. You don't really see a ton of, Star of Taco Bells going up all over the place. It's already established. It's there. Before Taco Bell, it was at Pizza Hut also an established brand. He helped Pizza Hut get through the Great Recession. He helped launch their mobile app, which was a big success for them based on back then. So Brian Nickel is coming into a new role versus Chipotle at Starbucks. However, Charles Starbucks is still growing. When I hear people talk about a turnaround, I don't agree with that. They have 38,000 stores and still growing. In addition to that, Chipotle was doing nothing but growth. Here are the number of Chipotles from 2017, they had 2,408 to last year, 3,437. That is a greater than 40% increase in the number of Chipotles. So that alone is going to drive revenue a ton by itself and then costs along the way. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not exactly convinced that this growth wouldn't have happened with a lot of other people. It is much easier to grow I shouldn't say it's much easier to grow a growing company. There are logistical things you have to keep in track. But remember, up until that point, from 2007 to 2017, they went from 700 stores to 2,400. So Chipotle already knew how to grow. And I'm not trying to take away from Brian. But to say that this is going to happen for Starbucks, totally different situation. Starbucks, even though it still has growth potential, is a lot more mature than Chipotle. Okay? So... Things are still good at Starbucks. Things are still getting better at Chipotle. The question is, can he keep Starbucks back into growth, keep that free cash flow growing? So this is the net income for Starbucks by year. 2 billion, 2.8, 2.8, 2.9, 4.5, 3.6, 9.28. You know why COVID? 4.2, 3.3, 4.1. So it's been kind of stagnant for quite a few years. But analysts... What are analysts saying about it? They have some nice growth here on the EPS for Starbucks. Four and a half, 13 and a half, 13 and a half, 18 and a half, 15%. It's a lot of growth potential still for Starbucks on the EPS side. And the revenue side, two and a half, eight, eight, ten, eight percent Now we're going to see a lot of growth as we have this inflation still going, but that's going to drive up more costs. But also in addition to that, they're still growing their locations. That is not something to be dismissing. How many locations? This is where I get excited. By 2030, Starbucks wants to open 
17,000 more locations. That would increase the number of stores by about 45 or 40%. Sound familiar? So that is where I do see the value for Brian Nickel. If he has the experience of growing more locations like, like they did at Chipotle, he can bring that to Starbucks. And guys, 17,000 more locations by 2030. That's incredible. That's what's impressive for Starbucks. That's where we can sit there and see extra value in Starbucks growth down the road. Now, guys, before we go further, you may have noticed that if you go to everythingmoney.com, that we only have a limited number of daily spots for our software and community. The reason for that is the software as it exists today currently includes everything we have to offer for retirement, stock analysis, real estate, all of these things right here. But behind the scenes, things are changing. We now have four YouTube channels and we're making big changes as we continue to expand. These offers are going to be separated out very soon and the current offer of everything is going away. Now, if you may remember, you've been watching us for a while, I built this software for myself so that my team and I could use it to constantly make better decisions in all aspects of my money and investing. But the channel and community have continued to grow and have grown immensely since then. So it has to become less about me and more about how I can make this thing better for you and serve you and our community members better. The good news is these changes haven't been made yet. So if you join today, you will be grandfathered in for life with all the data, all of these tools, and every future tool that we make, you will get it with no extra upcharge. This is the best deal we've ever offered. So if you're really serious about making better financial decisions, increasing your returns, and sleeping better at night, click the link in the description below to get access to everything we have to offer before we make these changes. And I'm very confident it will be the best decision you've made all year. So when it comes to Starbucks, what is the appropriate price? This is why our stock analyzer tool is so incredibly useful. Remember, every investment is the present value of all the future cash flow. So whatever cash flow in the future, you bring it back to today and it tells you this is the price you need to pay to get a certain return. So how do we do that? Stock analyzer tool. Now, the key is what are your assumptions about the future? Great thing about Starbucks, very high return on invested capital and growing. This means that their moat, especially with this high, it's actually a higher return on invested capital, I think, than Apple. And it also means that the money they invest in the business, they get a very high return on. And that's extremely important when you're about ready to increase your stores by 40 or 45%. It says when they do that, they are going to do well. They are going to make a lot of money. In fact, it tells me that those analyst estimates might be a little conservative. Is it true? I don't know. But remember, Starbucks is incredible. When I hear people criticizing Starbucks, I just laugh. Guys, the company's been around for 40, 45 years. How many new coffee brands are there? And guess what? If I pulled 100 people and said, name me a coffee company, how many would say Starbucks first? That's what I have to ask you. That's what's impressive about the company. Actually, the only thing I don't like about them is they're paying this dividend. To me, wipe that dividend away, let the stock fall, and buy back shares. You're giving your investors a huge advantage by doing that. So, here are the assumptions I made for Starbucks in my next 10 years of analysis. I did 4, 6, and 8% revenue growth. Guys, if they're going to grow their number of stores by 40% or 45% in the next 10 years, that alone is 3.5-4% growth per year. And on top of that, regular growth. So this six, 4, 6, and 8 might be conservative. Profit margin, I did 10, 12, and 13.5%. Free cash flow, I did 10, 12, and 14% because... The free cash was actually a little bit higher over the last 10 years than it was previously. PE. So guys, this company is clearly a moat. The question to ask yourself is, what kind of earnings multiple do you apply to this company in the future at the end of 10 years? The market average is 15 or 16. To me, this company deserves a huge premium. I'm calling it 20, 22 and a half, and 25 times earnings. Finally, what is your desired return? Now, guys, remember, this is not what I actually want to make. I'm trying to determine the intrinsic value of Starbucks. And from there, everybody needs to apply their margin of safety. The market returns 9 or 10%, so I put a 9% return in. So again, this is going to tell me, Paul, based on a market return of 9 or 10%, Starbucks is worth this. So we hit the analyze button. 
I have a low price of 63 to 66, high price of 130 to 140, middle price of 95. So we're pretty close to the middle price. And based, and by the way, these returns include your dividend. So if you bought it today's price and my middle assumptions all occur, you get about a nine and a half percent return. So for me, it's not enough margin of safety for me to feel comfortable with it. But for you, it very well could be, or you might disagree with my assumptions altogether. That's the point of having a stock analyzer tool. Guys, check out the next video on the 18 stocks that they actually own. Thank you for your time.